This farm has seven unique ponds and water harvesting elements, and it's one of the most innovative water systems that I've ever seen, where water's moving back and forth across the landscape for maximum percolation, restoring the watershed and making this a green paradise of productivity. But just a few years ago, this land had severe water shortages that were leading to degraded soils. But by creating a complex system that moves and stores water from the top to the bottom of the site, natural abundance has returned to the land. The water creates massive grass growth, meaning healthier soil and better grazing for livestock. It's been so effective that even the neighbors are joining in to expand the system, turning this into a watershed-wide movement in this video, you'll learn about the seven key water harvesting techniques that they use to completely transform the landscape into an abundant farm ecosystem. Thanks for having me, Brenda. I'm really excited to see how the whole system works here from top to bottom. This is Tavia Rasa Farms, and when I arrived, this was arid and almost desertified, but I just assumed there was gonna be plenty of water. We get so much rain, there has to be groundwater. We drilled one well, Two wells, it was a huge surprise when we didn't find water. The third well, we hit salty water. About a year later, we drilled and we found a gallon and a half per minute. After I lived here for about a year and a half, I went away for a weekend. And I came back three days later and found that I had no water because a toilet was running and went through about 800 gallons of water. So my dreams of starting a farm were pretty well dashed from the get-go. The preciousness of water became very clear at that point. The ironic part of this is I live in this little valley and there's just tons of seasonal streams and a creek, a watershed above me, but none of it was going in the ground. That's the fundamental problem with degraded landscapes and poor soils with no vegetation. Even when it rains, the water rushes away and doesn't soak into the ground. But when you harvest water into ponds and earthworks, holding it and soaking it into the soil, then you have water stored above ground and you recharge a subsurface water table that can be sustainably withdrawn from. I started doing my homework, researching water resiliency, and I found the work of Zach Weiss, Elemental Ecosystems and Water Stories. My friend and colleague Zach Weiss of Water Stories, which is a community teaching and inspiring people all around the world how to restore water cycles, worked here with his team to develop the water harvesting and storage systems that have rehydrated this landscape. The way these water bodies are built, they're really to recharge the water back into the earth and into the sides. And so we get this constant greenery, this vegetation, cooling, growth, and productivity. Zach and I walked the property, came up with a plan together. We really tracked where the water was coming from. There's a huge bluff right behind my property that was clear cut, and this huge amount of water comes down that bluff into this creek, and it was just blowing out this creek. So first of all, Zach and I thought about how do we capture the water to slow it down at the head of the creek. Let's take a look. Yeah, let's go for a walk. The first water harvesting technique is a sediment trap pond designed at the top of the landscape to collect sediment and stop soil erosion caused by stormwater rushing down the sloped hillside behind. So this is basically where it all starts? Yes, it really provides a beautiful function. All above here you see that is the watershed above us and it's catching all the soil that comes down that hill. So you have a neighbor that went and clear cut all of these trees and created this erosion condition. This is like the shock absorber of your system. It really is, it takes a beating. By capturing the runoff, this pond prevents sediment and nutrients from clogging up the rest of the system below. So let's go check out the rest of the system. Awesome. The second water harvesting technique is a wildlife refuge pond. What appears to be a fairly simple pond actually functions as a critical ecological oasis. This pond is deeper in the forest and you get deer coming through, all sorts of animals from cougar to bear. Isn't it beautiful? This is a crucial feature for the farming system further below, because when you give wildlife a safe and abundant space to live, especially predators like cougars, they are less likely to have conflict with livestock animals in the open pastures. This is high up on the watershed, so everything from here we can manage through these systems. So from this outlet, you can see how the water moves through here. It's an amazing amount of water, Andrew. 
The water then flows into the third water harvesting technique, infiltration ponds. Infiltration ponds collect rainwater in strategic places, keeping the soil hydrated throughout the landscape all year long. So now we're right below the headwaters in that pond that we just saw. So you have these bigger ponds and the locations where you can fit them, but then throughout this creek, you just have these little pocket ponds. Yeah, they really do serve a function. They're micro habitats for all sorts of animals, and this little micro pond will hold water all summer long. I can see how you're basically absorbing water into the soil, soaking it, soaking it, soaking it, and building that subsurface water table. Exactly. That slow, constant water infiltration acts like a drip irrigation system, hydrating the entire landscape. Now we're heading back down the pasture where the water drains into this serpentine-like terrace across the land. This is also a road that we use all the time. Water harvesting technique number four, the water harvesting pathway. Most pathways, and especially roads, cause water runoff. But this water harvesting pathway actually captures rain and directs it towards the ponds instead of letting it go to waste. This is an in-slope terrace, so we're actually catching all the water off this hillside right here. And there's a little swell that takes it to another swell and into that pond. The overflow from that pond goes into water harvesting technique number five, the zigzag terrace system. This feature is the most brilliant part of the whole water design on this property. So this is the upper pond. This receives water from the hillside above, and this feeds that terrace and then the lower pond. Even though there are two ponds fairly close to each other, instead of spilling directly from one pond down to the next, the water is moving through the landscape laterally across the entire contour back and forth in a long circuitous route, maximizing the amount of surface area that the flowing water has in contact with the soil, which means there's more water soaking into the ground throughout the whole landscape. More than any other place that I've actually ever visited, this site epitomizes the zigzagging of water. We get so much more water absorption into the soil this way, and that's why it's really unique. To make this function properly, the topography of the site was analyzed with extreme precision. It's amazing the power of water and where it will go. The water flows from the zigzag terrace into water harvesting technique number six, the pasture pond. Not only is this water design good for the ecosystem, it also supports a fully regenerative grazing system. Water is collected and stored in these unlined ponds, where a portion of the water percolates into the soil to recharge the shallow water table. Grasses and pasture plants thrive from the higher moisture levels, and this grows the food for a regenerative grazing system. We have Iris the bull coming to say hello. Uh-huh. We might want to step back a little bit. Yeah. <laughs> So you can see how beautifully the cows work with the water systems. Oh, yeah. Brenda carefully manages grazing animals in a way that actually helps restore the land. Which brings us to water harvesting technique number seven, which might surprise you, rotational animal grazing. Here's why. In a rotational system, the pasture is divided up into sections. The animals eat the grasses while fertilizing the soil, and then they're moved to a new area to allow the land to have a resting period after it's grazed. Cows have been grazing this pasture, and then we'll be able to bring the pigs on. So we're constantly letting the grass get eaten down to a certain amount, letting it rest, and then bringing more animals on. This pulsed grazing actually increases the overall growth of the grass because it mimics the conditions where grass evolved as a response to being eaten by migratory grazing animals. This extra growth, along with the animal manure, builds tons of organic matter in the soil. And for every 1% increase in organic matter in the soil, up to 25,000 gallons of additional water stored in the ground per acre. That's a massive boost to the soil's ability to hold water. This creates a regenerative cycle where the land becomes more abundant and the additional water in the soil produces greener grasses longer into the dry season. Brenda's success didn't just help her land, it inspired her neighbors to do the same. Hey. Hey, can you follow the terrace and come through the gate? Yeah. Hey, Linda, how are you? Hey. So when we finally got introduced, I had to show her around with the work that Zach and I had been doing over the years, and she completely fell in love with it. The water system on Brenda's farm connects to Linda's farm, and together they're restoring this whole landscape. 
So we're going through a gate that is taking us from Brenda's property over to my property and we're actually going to be walking on a terracing system that becomes the shared water flow during the wet season. A lot of times people ask me, what can we do when we don't control the whole watershed? My answer is always cooperation between neighbors. So it's really cool to be here and see how adjoining properties are actually cooperating for watershed scale restoration. Well, we're standing in an area that I like to call Little Pond. There is an underground creek that pops up, then meanders down the slope, hits Little Pond, hangs out till Little Pond is full, and the whole time it's coming down the slope, it's hydrating the soils, it's recharging the ground. When Little Pond gets full, it hits the overflow over here, and the overflow feeds the terrace, and you will soon see that the terrace then feeds my big pond called Oasis. Since we did cooperate as neighbors, she was able to prepare ahead of time downstream for what we knew was gonna happen upstream. So being considerate of what your neighbors are doing to plan accordingly, and because of that, we didn't have the usual issues. The power is the cumulative effect of neighbors doing the work of putting in this water infrastructure, interconnecting those systems, so we actually get watershed-wide effects. And all these ponds are performing multiple functions, but together, they're performing this big function. And the big function is restoration of the groundwater table, dramatic increase in habitat, and sub-irrigation of the productive agricultural system. It's definitely like a life purpose to do this stewardship, to help with the water cycle, to try and heal Mother Earth, to give all of our fellow creatures a place to live and enjoy life as much as we have been graced to do so here. A lot of people ask me why I did this. This system in 100 years will still be here, will still be feeding the land, it will be feeding all parts of this valley. I'm doing this for generations to come and they will benefit from it. If you have the means to do this kind of work, to take land that is in a state of degradation and bring it to a state of abundance, that's a worthy use of your resources. This whole watershed here will benefit from these types of structures. Now this piece of land can be farmed generations into the future in a regenerative way. Are you ready to transform deserts, create lush backyards and feed communities? In my almost 30 years as a permaculture designer traveling the world, I've put everything I learned into Oregon State University's online permaculture design course, or PDC. The PDC and PDC Pro are the ultimate ways to begin mastering permaculture. Me and my team guide you through over 20 assignments with more than 100 hours of top quality video lectures and resources, all focused on developing your own property or project throughout the course. You'll get personalized feedback from a dedicated instructor in a small group setting. People are always asking me, how can I be part of the solution? This is your starting point. Check the link below for upcoming courses and join us in creating a better world for everyone. See you in class.